Hello, my name is Lily. From the title, you can probably guess what I'm about to tell you. Get yourself ready, because what I am going to tell you is the scariest thing I have experienced in my life. When I was 16 years old, I was a girl who you could say was, okay, not outstanding, but eye-catching. It was a normal Saturday night like usual. I was lying on my bed, scrolling through my phone, watching movies, playing games, and FaceTiming with my friends. One of my friends suggested that I try using a trending dating app. The reviews say that this app can help find me new guys in my area. After a few scrolls, I saw a boy from the same school as me. He also used this app, and he had just joined a few minutes ago. Anyways, I clicked to see where he would live. I was a little surprised when it said that he was zero meters away from me. I reassured myself with the thought that this might be an application error, because the app was new anyway. I swiped right. Mm, he's cuter in real life than in the picture, I thought. He swiped right, too. I jokingly texted, Hey, cute guy. He replied, Hey there, I asked. Can I get another picture of you? You look really nice. And he sent me a picture. I was a little startled because the picture looked pretty scary. His surroundings were dark with only light shining on his face. Did you turn off the light and go to bed, I asked? No, he said. I'm under your bed. <laughs> A chill ran down my spine when I read those words. The comfortable bed I was lying in suddenly became cold and terror-inducing. <laughs> that was funny, I replied. With my hand reaching out to turn off the lamp, I felt like I was frozen when I saw that there was a tiny light emanating from under my bed. The light went out quickly. I screamed, turned the switch back on, and ran out. I closed the door, running along the corridor while screaming for my parents. Both rushed out of their bedroom. I said, uh, there, there, there's something under my bed. My parents quickly took me to run into my sister's room, and the whole family hid inside. We called the police. I looked out the window and saw someone jumping out of the window of my room. When the police arrived, they started taking our testimony and using CCTV they discovered that during the past three weeks, someone had come into my house through my room window every day at 7 p.m. when my whole family was having dinner together. It was terrifying. He covered his face and no one knew until tonight when he ran out of my room in a panic. He dropped the phone. Guess what was on the standby screen of that phone? Haha, <laughs> that was funny, it said. My message. I was shocked and scared, and then I deduced that recently he was talking to me, trying to get to know me. Once, I just talked about craving Domino's pizza last night with a friend through FaceTime. The next day, he approached me, talking about doing a magic trick, and he guessed correctly I wanted to eat Domino's pizza. All those memories made me shudder. That very same night, after contacting the police, the police contacted my school and found my stalker's address. But upon arrival, there was no one. Police found many photos of me sleeping in the apartment and many other disturbing photos with him. My student tried to get me caught by the police. This is Carver, a primary teacher in one of the suburbs of England. In my career, I will never forget the case of the naughtiest student, Matthew. What he has done to me is beyond our imagination. That day, I was sitting at grade 3 to get my student's test. A familiar voice came up. I got a gift for you, Miss Carver. Matthew stood in front of my desk, holding out a big chocolate chips cookies. I have to say, I was surprised. Matthew and I didn't exactly get off on the right foot. His grades were bad. And whenever I corrected him during class, I could hear him muttering, You're stupid. Or so ugly under his breath but i knew his parents were going through a nasty divorce and he was only nine so i let it slide and it seems my efforts paid off thank you that's so sweet i said placing it in the middle of my desk to tell the truth i didn't really want to eat the chickens i was on a strict no sugar diet to lose five pounds before my friend's wedding this weekend so i didn't eat the cookies that morning it just sat there, nestled between my pencil holder and stack of flashcards. But before lunch, Matthew came up to me and asked, Are you going to eat your cookies now, Miss Carver? And finally, I felt kind of bad. So when Matthew came into class after lunch 
and saw that the cookie was missing. He looked shocked. "You ate it?" "Yes, I did," I said with a smile. "It was very good." He sat down in the back row and didn't say anything for the rest of the class. I admit I felt bad for fooling him, but I couldn't break my diet now. It was dashed away in one of my drawers. In the afternoon, I ended class a few minutes early. I had to catch my flight to Miami for the wedding. As I was packing up to leave, I thought of the cookies. I can't just leave it here over the weekend. It will go bad. Well, maybe I won't bring it. I thought, just in case I get really hungry on the plane. I wrapped it in a napkin, threw it in my laptop bag, and hopped an Uber to the airport. The lines at security were long. When I finally got there, I put my laptop in one of the bins and threw the rest of the bag onto the conveyor belt. But after I passed through the metal detector, I was immediately pulled aside by one of the TSA agents. "Ma'am, come with me," she said, leading me down a hallway and into a back room. "I'm I'm already late for my flight," I puffed. "I might not be able to board." The door swung open. There were several people sitting around the table. Some were TSA agents. Others were wearing a uniform I couldn't identify, and they were all staring at the item in the center, the cookies. Dread flooded me. My legs began to shake. Matthew's face flashed through my mind with his toothy grin. In a small voice, I ask, "What's going on?" One of the officers stepped forward. The scanner showed that there's something embedded inside the cookies, or rather, multiple things. I stared out at it. My vision began to swim, and I gripped the back of the chair for support. "What? What's inside it?" I asked, my voice trembling, but I was afraid of the answer. Razor plates, eight of them, backed right into it. I was so shocked, but I told the officers that it was just a cake that was sent to me anonymously. I still have a wedding to attend. When I got back from the wedding, the kid was gone. He's moved to a different town, and I haven't seen him ever since.